What if you could control your MP3 player project completely wirelessly? No Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, just two ESP32 boards talking directly using ESP Now. In this video, I'll show you how the ESP32-S3 talks to the DYHB20T MP3 board to control tracks and volume from across the room. I'll also show you a simple local control setup and how to add even more button features. In this video, I'll be using up to two ESP32 boards, an MP3 player board, a 10K potentiometer for volume control, a couple of momentary push buttons, an Unce Angle 3 Pro speaker, an 8 ohm 1 watt speaker, a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, a DC power connector, a breadboard, some jumper wires, a 5 volt and 9 volt power supply, and a 3.5 millimeter audio cable. I mentioned this MP3 player board in more detail in a previous video, but I will mention a few things you want to consider if you're going to do this project. The DYHV20T MP3 player board supports SD cards up to 32 gigabytes. That's a lot of songs. The MP3 tracks must be named in 5 digit numeric order like you see here. These numbers correspond directly to the track index numbers you send over UART. This board features a Class D amplifier that can drive a 4 ohm speaker at 20 watts or an 8 ohm speaker at 10 watts. I'm using a 1 watt 8 ohm speaker just for testing, but if I'm not careful I can overdrive the speaker and damage it. If you're going to use the onboard amplifier to power your speaker, your best bet is to use either a 20 watt 4 ohm or a 10 watt 8 ohm speaker, depending on your power supply. For example, if you're using a 12 volt power supply and it can deliver 3 amps or more, go with a 4 ohm 20 watt speaker for maximum volume. If your 12 volt power supply delivers around 1 amp of current, go with the 10 watt 8 ohm speaker for best performance under normal use. Our MP3 player board has multiple modes, but for this demo we're going to set the dip switch to UART. Here's the setup for local control of our MP3 player board using the ESP32-S3. You notice that the dip switch 1 and 2 are down, 3 is up. I'm using a very low 9 volt 1 amp power supply. The TX pin of my MP3 player board is connected to pin 18 of the ESP32. The RX pin of the MP3 player board is connected to pin 17 of the ESP32. And the button pin is pin 4 on the ESP32, and that button is just to advance to the next track. This is the code that we'll use for this setup, and it just uses one button to control the MP3 player board, and that button is used to play the next track. But there are some ways that you can modify it for your own project. The set volume has a range of 0 to 30, so you can adjust that to your own needs. I only have 10 MP3s on the SD card at the moment, but if you have more tracks than that, go to line 31 and change the number 10 to reflect the number of MP3s you have on your SD card. Now I'm going to add a couple extra buttons for 3 button control. i got a play button, a back button, and a stop button. This version has an autoplay feature. Originally we had to press the button for every song. Now the song is to play continuously, and when one finishes, the next song automatically starts. And for that reason, we integrated the busy pin, which allows the code to know exactly when to play the next track. Because the busy pin is held low while playing, and then goes high when finished, you'll never have your track interrupted by another song. Here's the code for the autoplay setup, and I will include this in the email list for those of you who are on it. And here's the diagram for the three button autoplay. Next thing we're going to do is run this short sketch here to get the MAC address of the receiver ESP32 that we're going to use. This code sets the board to station mode, which acts like a Wi-Fi device that connects to other networks, but it won't broadcast its own network. This is actually a required mode for ESP Now because ESP Now uses the station interface to communicate directly between other ESP32 boards or peer-to-peer -peer without using a router. Now after you run this, your MAC address should show up in your serial display and it's written in hexadecimal. It's usually shown as six pairs separated by colons, just like we have right here. Now we're going to control the MP3s wirelessly, whether it's sounds or music. We have one button to advance to the next track and a 10K resistor to control the volume. For this project, I'll be using two ESP32s, and this is what my transmitter looks like with a button on pin 4 and a potentiometer on pin 1. This is the code we use for the transmitter board, and you'll notice in this code, this is where you use the MAC address that we found earlier for a receiver board. Now this is my MAC address. You'll want to use the MAC address that showed up in your serial display with the code that we just ran. Just so you know, this is the packet structure for the data that's being communicated between the two boards. It tells what track number to play and what volume level should be set at, and it also prevents duplicate commands. If you want to change your sound a little bit, you can experiment with these ranges just to find out what feels best for you. Well, this is my receiver setup, and as you can see, I removed the 8 ohm speaker, the small one, and I replaced it with a portable speaker with a built-in amplifier. 
just for better sound. It's actually a Bluetooth speaker, but I'm not using the Bluetooth. Source. I'm connecting directly from the speaker to the MP3 player using a 3.5 millimeter audio cable. And this is what that connection diagram looks like. This is the code that we use for the receiver board. And if you go back and look, starting on 48, this is the callback function where all the magic happens. This is the function that will automatically run whenever a wireless packet arrives. It essentially decodes the packet and decides what to do. This is my three button transmitter setup, and as you can see, I added a couple extra buttons. I have a play button and a back button with continuous play and a stop button. Here is the diagram for the three button transmitter. This is the code we use for the three button transmitter. Now I do have three buttons, a play, back, and stop buttons. Now the play button will go forward uh, track after track, and then autoplay will continue from there. The back button will go back one track, and then go forward and then autoplay goes from there. And then we have the stop button. This is our three button receiver diagram and it is largely the same. Since we're using the continuous play, we want to use that busy pin on the MP3 player board to pin two on the ESP32. This is the code that we're using for the three button receiver. It's a little bit different. It now handles continuous playback instead of just one track at a time. The state management for the buttons is a little bit different. Now it has to determine whether autoplay is active or whether the stop button has been pressed or it has to determine what track we're on. So with all that said, this receiver actively manages the playback. I'll just press this button against the table here. That's the volume control. After autoplay, place tracks 1 through 10, it'll loop around and play them again. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, also subscribe to the email list. It's just much easier to distribute the code and diagrams that way. And I get the best comments and emails from you guys. So I look forward to hearing from you all. And I'll see you again with another video.